jumped out and made a good test of stamina of it. We don't want to be anyone fiddling around and sprinting. Having said that, on his sire side, he's bred to get a mile and a half, but on his dam side, he'd be questionable. It's pretty speedy. Uh, she was an ACAC filly. She was very fast to sell her a mile. And uh, there's a couple of sprinters down the bottom there. But you need tactical speed for Epson. Let's hope the stamina holds the other end. There's only one way to find out, and that's to run. But it's a race you've got to very much leave to the jockey because it's, uh, they tend to go pretty quick early on. It depends on the number of runners, and it very much depends on your draw. You wouldn't think so for a mile and a half, but you come to that elbow early on, and if you're drawn in a particular spot, you need to try and hold some kind of position. Uh, you don't want to, if you get drawn very low, that's, it can be critical you hold a position from there. So I tend to leave it up to a jockey if he knows it will. I think you've obviously got to have enormous respect for the favourite. He's a very short price favourite. Uh, he's won the guineas in great style. He's beautifully bred. He's a well-balanced horse. He's a very legitimate short price favourite. Derby day wouldn't be complete without the picnic. And again, the picnics are much happier events when it's sunny and dry. And uh, fashion events too. Not the overpowering fashion nonsense that can be asked, but places to look at. And this is the part that is good about the Derby, is that you feel, have a sense of sharing right across the um, costume spectrum, put it that way around. You don't have to wear a stiff collar and a topper to be part of it. And the buses still do plenty of trade. Not quite the complete packed out feel, but everybody peeled off as a day off from work. In these more times, it's holiday time on a Saturday. And the tailgating, as they call it in America, the backs of the cars, the picnics, still go well. Makes you rather thirsty just to look at it. I believe the arguments are now all over about a Saturday derby. It is here to stay. The atmosphere is back. I'm not giving you hype. I'm not just saying what the Epsom executive would want me to say. But when you're down here, you feel that the old days of the derby are returning. Jim Kremen in the Racing Post yesterday wrote that the Epsom marketing had done a blinder and to sell the race, which they have, it has worked, and the crowds here are having a tremendous time. The weather is right, there's a cracking good horse, we could be seeing an entrepreneur, but a Saturday derby, this is the 12th Saturday derby there has been, the third in consecutive years on a Saturday. It is here to stay. The knockers should go back in their holes, or come here and stand here where I am, and let's hear when we move back to Johnny Lights, what price is entrepreneur? 11 to 10, he's calling against. So there you are, come racing, tax-free, on the course. The odds on entrepreneur <laughs> is 11 to 10 against a Saturday derby. It's here. Next year, you come! All the professionals that I know are going for entrepreneur, but the derby is the people's race. So let's ask the people what they think is going to win. Madam, what do you think is going to win? Bold demand. Bold because he's by Rainbow Quest, so he's got the breeding and his Frankie's on him. Frankie de Tori for his first... Sir, so what about you? Silver Patriot, the only one proven over the distance. Each way, cautiously. What are you going for in the derby? I'm going for Cloudings. Cloudings? Mm. The French horse? Just a feeling. Oh, just a feeling. <laughs> Madam, what about you? Entrepreneur. Your first one, why? Well, I think he's a great horse. And you're not put off and by the, the price at all? Well, um, no. No? Well, how much are you going to have on? I, I, I'm not having a bet, but I fancy him. That's a nice way to do it. Madam, you're studying the card there. What's yes. going to win the derby? Benny the Dip. Benny the Dip, why? Oh, the Dip. I like the name. That's good enough for me. Let's see what you... What are you going for in the derby? Oh, Almush Tarak. Oh, Almush Tarak, right. In the derby. Uh, derby. Uh, Which horse in the derby? Well, I've I've bet Entrepreneur at 12 to 1, so it's looking good Ooh, at the moment. Can you give yes. us a bit of sex? What are you going for? Value Romanoff each way. Romanoff? Yes. Why, why do you fancy that? Well, I heard he worked well here yesterday. He did. You yes. obviously watch in the morning line. Hey, what about you, sir? I'm going for far. In the derby. Why is that? Well, because I think it's probably got the best chance of winning. Yes, yes. that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody, well, here we are at the winning post. It's down to you, and it's interesting. Only one person out of the people that we've talked to said entrepreneur will come back past this post first. Only one has gone for the red hot favourite. 
and the favourite's been beaten in the first race at Haydock this afternoon, though it is subject to a steward's inquiry. First past the post, number seven, Shadoof at eight to one, who got up in the very last stride to beat number three, Crystal Gold, 15 to eight favourite. Third, number six, Selet at eight to one. Eight ran, there is a steward's inquiry. This race named after the first Derby winner. Diamed, who won in 1780. The Vodafone Diamed stakes a mile and a half a furl on the trip, and nine of them are going to run it. And they're headed by Al Mushtarak, a 40 to 1 chance with Russell Price. Capchaluka, 11 to 2, possible front runner here, Richard Hughes. Camtara, fancy for the Derby of his year, 5 to 1 chance with Frankie de Torre. Polar Prince, 12 to 1, Ray Cochran. Prince of My Heart, 14 to 1, Michael Hills. Hurricane State is 20 to 1, John Reed. Amid Al Badu is a 4 to 1 chance with Richard Hills. Faithful Sun trades the 15 to 8 favourite with Mick Kinnan. And Fantastic Fellow, another possible front runner here, a 7 to 1 chance with Olivier Pellier. That's the lineup for the Vodafone Diamond Stakes. This is a cracking race, and uh, as Bruff has told you, it commemorates the first derby with a Diamond. And the reason this race is a mile is that the first derby was over a mile. It wasn't until four years later it was extended to a mile and a half and it's been a pleasure John for the last five seven minutes or so having a really good look at these horses there's well there's, there is one but virtually all of them bar one look in the absolute pink of condition I certainly agree with you there Kamtara and uh, quite a few of the uh, there's nothing to choose between them but this fellow here faithful son is a son of Zil's Alp and he's had two races, one twice, and last time out at Leicester, absolutely bolted up from a horse of Barry Hills that I quite like called Zayim. He was gelded as a two-year-old because he was considered a bit of a handful, but he's done absolutely nothing wrong in two starts to, to date. And, as John said, absolutely bolted up in a small field at Leicester. Just a worry that he might not have enough experience for this unique track and the fact that his opponents are of a far higher standard than he's met previously, but he's highly regarded in fine form. Well, Amid Albadou's one that uh, I watched when he won at uh, Newbury first time up impressed me immensely, and then he went to Kempton, got touched off by Among Men, who's a horse of Michael Stout, so you could say that he's got a line through... Uh, that horse to his runner here this afternoon, faithful son. But uh, this horse is very tough, fought all the way up that straight at Kempton, only went down by a short head. A lot of this will just depend on the way things go and ways some of these horses with less experience adapt to the undulations of this course. He didn't look very happy, but he did win at Chester last year, John, but he didn't look very happy. He was a big, immature two-year-old, and maybe it was just a, a weakness at that stage, but I, I want to see him run on a track like this in the, at this level before being confident he'd reproduce his best form. And latest betting shows that Amid Al Badu is a 92 chance, but Michael Stout, the trainer of entrepreneur, has the favourite. Faithful Son, two to one, though drifting out from six to four. Amid Al Badu at nine to two, at eleven to two, Cam Tar and Cap Julica. Fantastic fellow at thirteen to two chance, at twelve to one, Polar Prince. Sixteen's Prince of My Heart on twenty to one, Hurricane State, and the outsider is Al Mushtarak at forty to one. Well, it is just the most glorious afternoon. It's a far pleasanter day to be out as well. That's both for horse and for spectator because the humidity is not quite so intense as yesterday. The clouds are a lot higher and it's, as you imagine, your perfect derby day. Track in superb condition, fine horses competing and a really healthy crowd. Just look at that. Virtually every stand has a healthy gathering of spectators, not quite the hordes that we saw when Airborne won in 1946, but even up on the hill at the top of your picture there, you can see there's plenty of people come for the day. Certainly a lot more than in recent years, and they've worked really hard here at Sandown, promoting this race, promoting the meeting. And to be perfectly fair, if they don't get a packed crowd today, then they never will. Some superb racing. And fantastic fellow leading uh, our Mushtarak down there. Perfect conditions. Sun began to come through about an hour ago. They had a nice drop of rain last night. No excuses for any horse this afternoon.
Hits to my heart, the third of those going along there. He's been round this course already. Well, he went round yesterday morning, ran in the derby last year. And he arrived yesterday with Barry Hill's two derby entries, the fly in Mulsa Hill. And he's, he's grown up an awful lot. He used to take a, a fair hold. And you can see now Mike Hill's just stood up in the irons, just kidding to him, just keeping him settled. It'll be interesting the tactics on him, John. One presumes as he won over uh, nine furlongs on soft ground last time, ridden handily, that they're hardly likely to drop him in. But uh, if he if if he does take Capture Luca on, it could in effect set the race up for those who want to come from behind because Capture Luca also a natural front runner. And the Dubai representative here is Kamtara. Trained by Saeed Bin Saror, horse who also looks wonderfully well. Out of Snowbride, who was promoted to first after finishing second in the Oaks. This horse, John, looks stronger than last year. Oh, he's filled out uh, a fair bit. And he, he put up some good performances last year. But I remember watching him beat Ali Royal. And he didn't actually run too badly behind Singh Spiel in the uh, World, Dubai World Cup. Lovely action horse just have a look how much ground he covers he's very similar to the dam she she had a really enthusiastic racing style and she was a deep rich chestnut which which he is he's a little bit of a character there's there's no getting away from that and uh, almost looks a shade too exuberant there but frankie yeah he's in control yeah well, that's his stride he's almost bouncing along really enjoying himself well named after a beautiful bay in anguilla is number two capture luca and this horse, a couple of seasons ago, Capture Luca threatened to be, well, he was one of the best handicappers in training. He won the Cambridge under a, a record weight for a three-year-old. Went wrong last year, but signs of recapturing that old zest, John, when he won a, a muddling minor event the other day at Newbury, but he did it nicely. He did. They didn't go much of a gallop, and I spoke to Richard Hughes on the way in today, and he said he was very impressed with him. That was his first race. Had a very light campaign last year because of that injury. Lovely looking horse. You could uh, you could see him making up into a stallion when they came with you a couple of years ago with top weight. Nearest to us is Il Al Mushatarak, ridden by Russell Price, and this horse was fourth in the Jersey Stakes at Royal Ascot last year. Also won a handicap at Kempton and a listed race at Linkfield last summer. This is his first run since last July. He's now in the care of Camille uh, Ma Mardi having previously been with Gay Kellaway, and to be quite honest, we'll just have to see how he runs rather than make any bold predictions because he's got to be better than ever to win this. Yeah, he certainly started off well. He's had his first runner, Camille, on uh, Wednesday, I think, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Had a 20 to 1 winner first with his first runner. You sound like you were on. No, not at all. It, uh, no, it's just there was a little bit of controversy as to whether his license was actually going to come through in time, but uh, fortunately it did. I should imagine it's quite an open race, this. Mac, how are they betting? Certainly is an open race, Great and Greatest Jockey with Faithful Sun. They put in a precautionary 6-4, to four, out the 2-1. to one. I've heard 85-40 to 40 called against it. And six favourites and 26 runnings have won it. But this is the first key race of the season where three-year-olds take on the older horses. And 14 times in those 26 runnings, the three-year-olds have beaten their elders. And there is very strong support for our Amid al Badu to go and make it number 15 at On the Shoulders, 9-2 to two against Faithful Sun. 7-1 to one the bottom one fantastic fellow and 20 hurricane state the three-year-olds are really favored here 11 to 2 capture lucro very weak camtara out to 11 to 2 and his 14 polar prince and 16 prince of my heart but the three-year-olds there are four of them here this is the first race of the year that they have bettered the older horses statistically it comes later and later in the handicaps of course but not now this is the time for the three-year-olds according to the stats John, you like this fella, Polar Prince? He looked in good I nick. I did. He's, he was the one horse that just stood out, not so much because he looked well in his coat. I've, just, I've seen him look better than that, but he's, he's got a little bit more depth to him than some of the others. And he's a horse that um, I've seen run quite a few times. This morning, a little bit. I should think he's uh, well within his compass. He's a horse who's won here at Epsom. And I think he'll give a good account of himself. We didn't put him down as the eye-catcher. That went to Hurricane State for us.